Hello and welcome back to the world of Tomb Raider and these beautiful remasters and my continuing adventures through the series and we are going to be moving on, yes, to the Tomb of Qualipec, the fourth level in Tomb Raider 1. And here we are, straight away. Um, what's uh, interesting that I didn't actually point out last time is that often the ends of each level are obviously the say closed door of the previous level especially if you're in uh, the same chapter so for example we are currently in the peru chapter of the game that will change as it goes on but uh, i do think it's cool that the levels usually pick up exactly where you left off and of course the last time we went through that door at the end you know after lara was eaten by a t-rex uh yeah i just like that touch that the levels don't kind of they feel connected to a larger world i suppose is what i'm trying to say so here we are in the tomb of Qualapec. Okay, right straight away I see a switch. And when you see a switch, what must you do? Pull the switch. Oh god, and straight away, two velociraptors to be dealing with. Two velociraptors getting chomped down on by um, very, very sad things. Okay, cool, right. Yes, so this is one of the levels that has <clears throat> three gates, which we can see there. That of course, at some stage, I presume we're going to be opening them up. Uh, I keep forgetting, this is the button. So here we go. That's another... Is that... That more looks like a, a, a diffused light, doesn't it? Rather than a sky, if that's what they're going for here. That's cool though. Okay, right. Lovely stuff. So I suppose we're going to have to go through this door which I just opened and have a look around very nicely. Also, in the last episode with the famous T-Rex and dinosaurs, it kind of, uh, it's only just struck me now that I never even considered the possibility, and it's the first time I considered it afterwards, uh, that like dinosaurs in the early 90s because of jurassic park became hugely hugely popular so i wonder were dinosaurs put into this game for that reason you know because we were definitely still in that kind of dinosaur fever from jurassic park and yeah when did the lost world come out is that a 1997 movie i think it might be so again, yeah, dinosaur fever was still a thing, I suppose, if you want to call it dinosaur fever. That's what I'm calling it, anyway. More beautiful music there from Nathan McCree. There is actually um, a album that was released by Nathan McCree in the last number of years. I, c I can't remember the exact year, but it's uh, the orchestral music is performed, or the music from the Tomb Raider. It's called the Tomb Raider Suite. And uh, music from the Tomb Raider soundtracks is performed by a live orchestra. I believe he did some shows around the time of it. I do not know whether they do shows of that anymore. It is something I would have absolutely loved to see back then. Because, again, the music in Tomb Raider is like... It's brilliant. It's, it's, truly, it's, truly, it's truly so memorable. And like the fact that the team... I think perfectly encapsulates the character herself, the main Tomb Raider theme. It kind of has that mystery and intrigue, but also like wonderment about history and, uh, you know, adventuring, but also has, you know, a little bit of a kind of a dainty, soft feel. It's, it's, it kind of, I think it perfectly perfectly encapsulates Lara really in a sense which is a cool thing I am yet again waffling on but how and ever that is what I do that is the my thing is waffling on oh, okay right that's where this has brought us I know there's a few if I remember correctly a few kind of dodgy weird traps in this particular level so what what was all that about what was the, what was the point of me going up there there's another way. There's another way to go. Let's go that way. Oh, whoa, that was close. Yeah, I was over there, right? And then I came back around here. Yo, it's 
side did I enter from? See, some of these levels do get a little confusing. Can I make that jump? I entered from over there, right? Like... This side. I think. <laughs> okay, let's attempt that jump. I don't think I'm gonna make this jump at all, actually. Save game. Here we go. No. Can you make that jump? Is it even a possibility? Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm losing the run of myself here already. Barely started playing. Okay, let's hop down onto the floor to begin with. Did I- I didn't enter by the, via the floor. So this should be a different way altogether, yeah. Okay, this is leading up. Back to this location. Ah, okay. Yes. Right, right, right. Ah, I see. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do now. Very silly. So that door is just a randomly opening door. The one that I just came out of up here. This door. And then this switch I'm supposed to switch back, I presume. Yeah. Exactly. And then I can go back up here. So that door wasn't open when I arrived. And I just required me going up and around in order to get here, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Finally, I've understood exactly what's after happening. So, is there any reason to actually pull that switch at all? <clears throat> when you enter that room. Because all it does is move it in, a, in, the wrong, in the wrong direction for when you'll need it. Hard to know. And it's now moved where? There's no other way. Ah, I see. Okay, right. So that's why... That's why it's needed. That's why the switch is needed at all. Yeah, and so puzzle solving obviously is a rather large proportion of the original Tomb Raider saga. It actually became less of a thing as the series moved on. Um... Right, I'll get over there this way. But I think in Tomb Raider 1, the actual puzzle solving is usually just down to, like, relatively simplistic stuff like this. You know, finding finding out where to move something in a room if a switch does that. Or, you know, can you raise the floor level up and down or the water level up and down. Um, but yeah, I think some of the puzzles get a little more tough. And even just the puzzles of, like, how do I make my way through this level as the games go on? And in Tomb Raider 3 is where I think, like, all of that stuff, especially the traversal throughout the world, gets super, super hard. There's one of the doors open. Okay, cool stuff. And we've got another one of our friends here. Oh! Take a close look at two Incan monkey monkeys? Monkeys? <laughs> Mummies. Right, yeah, I did. I took I took a look at one at the very start in caves, and now I'm taking a look at this guy. Sorry, I have to leave you. I hope you have a good time being mummified. There's no other way. I do not know why that Blur song is in my head. Maybe it's because I'm just channeling the 90s as I'm playing. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure there's a trophy. I'm, I remember reading from the trophy list of not getting bitten by any velociraptors. I, I don't think I'll be getting this, that trophy in this playthrough anyway. In the whole of the Peru chapter. I'm going to save early and save often. And there's another reason why I'm going to save early and save often. Often Speaking of trophies, because there is actually a trophy required. Uh, there is a trophy for saving like 86 or 90 times or something like that so i want that trophy another light box <laughs> so the sky boxes have been like the mvp for um do you know like best inclusion in the new tomb raider remasters but these ones aren't good because they just look to me like 
diffused lighting inside like a shopping mall or something like that. Okay, so we all see it there on the floor. We have, yeah, a broken tile. I'm just going to have a quick look around this room, make sure there's no other switches. I don't quite fully remember this level. But, yeah. I don't want to die. You know where you are? Okay. Um, well, I have a save, so it should be okay. There we go. Lara kicking ass and taking names as per usual. Oh, there's kind of like... White? Why is there white stuff on this guy's uh, model? On his toes and one of his thumbs. Is he doing... <laughs> Is he doing cocaine? <laughs> Before he died? Is that how he died? Again, yeah, just swapping back and forth is so much fun. Um, and for somebody who is very well versed in how these games looked when I played them back in the day and, you know, in uh, over the years, really, I suppose, uh, it's it's really nice to have this feature to instantly change. Because I know I played a small bit of the Halo collection that came out, the Master Chief collection. And that's super good as well. Like, it's the work they put in there. Like, it actually boggles the mind how you can make a game be able to do that so seamlessly. And apparently, the HD side of this, or the, the, the high-definition graphics side of this, runs in 60 frames per second. And this original game runs at 30. So... To be able to then also dynamically shift the frame rate as well as all the graphics just instantaneously is, it's actually incredible. I'd say it must have been pretty hard to code that. Is there anything down there? Yeah, in the Master Chief Collection, like, I just, I liked the first game of uh, uh, Halo, but I haven't really, like, I played a small bit of the second game. The, I like the first two levels of the third game, and I, I, I'm not the biggest Halo fan ever, but um, I'm not so well versed in those games that seeing the changes are novel when you switch back and forth, but seeing all the changes here to the textures instantaneously, like, I've been, say, I've been harping on about it now in every episode, but it's, it truly is really great what they're after doing um, with this this game ah and if you're enjoying the tomb raider uh, hd remasters let me know what you've thought about them so far if you are playing them i know i certainly am loving them so far okay right picked up one med kit and i opened the second door in the center area right yeah so i'm going back out here always prepare to fight something nothing else to fight right and into the final room i believe if i remember correctly this is usually the room that kills me the most maybe there's uh, in my mind's eye i can see some kind of room like this is there like spikes under a floor somewhere through here maybe we'll find out in a minute Never gets old watching Lara push amazingly large blocks of stone with absolute ease. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, it's this, there's a jump here that I, uh, that I always get wrong on the way back. So I am 100% saving it here for my own safety. And for your safety of actually seeing me complete the, the mission. The mission? The level. There we go. So that's the three doors open for this location. And we're going to do a little walk because, as we said, when I have a look down, there is, yeah, we can see them. Lovely spikes. And I think it's just that she bonks her head off the ceiling. And you've got to be ready to grab. And there is nothing down there. Are we sure of that? Because I know you can actually drop down onto spikes from a certain height. But I'm not going to chance that. Right, anyway, the game was saved. I got through that area. Have a one look around that box just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Nothing on the floor, no hidden mag magnum bullets like the last time. The Tomb of Qualipec. Okay, 
Right, and we're going back out now because we've opened that door and I probably have to fight something, so always be prepared with your guns. Guns at the ready, Lara. Now, there is a room up there as well. And I know that there is, <clears throat> if I'm correct in thinking, which I am, there's a little, uh, there's a lot, actually, uh, seemingly, uh, Indiana Jones references, which makes complete sense because, like, that's totally what Lara Croft is. She's a female Indiana Jones vibe. But, yeah, just as I said, we've got Lara running away from a boulder, just like Indiana Jones. And when we get to the end, towards the end of this level here, uh, there's something I do want to speak about in regards to that particular boulder. Um, we'll get to it when we get to it, but... <clears throat> uh, yeah, that boulder caused some headaches for me when I was a younger person. And you see, that's why the boulder is there, because of course, they lock the door. And there she is, there's one of the first pieces of what we can call the skion. The, uh, the red herring, I suppose, of this, uh, this game, Tomb Raider 1. The skion. So we will get back to that shortly, but first, let us move on to the next room. And be careful of booby traps around every corner, because this is Tomb Raider after all. Yeah, that's a better skybox, but again, the, the, it just looks like a diffused electronic light in, in a tomb, an ancient tomb. Yeah, saving early and saving often. This is going to be a lot of saving from kind of here on out, because I'm not as confident on these levels as I on previous levels. Right, so the first secret, I believe, in the level is up here, and I never knew this. Again, I've been watching... Ooh! That was really stupid. I've been watching some videos um, to just make sure that I know where they all are. I've never ever been up here in a, any playthrough. But, there it is, the first secret, and of course we've got a spiked floor again actually kind of reminiscent of the floor in indiana jones the last crusade movie where he has to step over onto the right letters to not descend into a pit uh, full of spikes and death basically but in the latin it starts with an i Jehovah, yeah. There we go, right. I like that you can walk through the spikes as well in this game. It's, again, very reminiscent of Prince of Persia. And in fact, I would, I would like to know, was there much influence taken from Prince of Persia when the original team was making core design? I don't think I've ever really seen Prince of Persia referenced that much as a as an influence, but it really feels as if this is uh, the version of a 3D Prince of Persia. There we are, there is the Skion. Let's have a look at it. Right, and also before we pick up the Skion, let's have a look at, that is our friend Qualapec, obviously, sitting down on the throne, enjoying himself. And of course, the eagle-eyed viewers of you that haven't played this game before will notice that one of those mummies next to them, strangely, his head seems to be following me. The other one, not so much. And uh, what I like about this is these particular mummies are actually a bit of a foreshadowing for later on in the game. Again, for anybody who's watching this for the first time, I don't know why you would be, but... Uh, I won't give away what exactly it is. They'll come back as they come back. But I like that there's like foreshadowing in the game as well. It's very thoughtful. Right. But what you can actually do is you can aim at this particular mummy. There we are. I've never seen that. You can knock down the mummy by just jumping at it. You don't even have to shoot it. But you can actually shoot that mummy. Brilliant stuff. Right. Can I knock down the other one? Can't. Okay, interesting. I've never seen that. I've never seen that you can just jump into the mummy and it, it drops down dead. Lovely stuff. There's another light box. Okay, it's time to pick up the ski on, though. To get a move on. 
Woo. Here we are. Okay, right. Gotta play it careful here. Well, as careful as we can. Luckily, we don't have another boulder that's going to come down. Ooh, you gotta be so careful. Right, here we are. So yes, anyway, I completely missed it and didn't talk about it at all. But I remember being a kid and like... In most games at the time, invisible walls were a thing. So like you try to walk this side of this boulder, it's very hard. You can squeeze through because you can actually... I'm completely stuck now. You can glitch through, right? But to me, that boulder being in that location says... You can't go down this hallway anymore, but you can just easily squeeze by and continue out of the level, out of the door that was the start point for this level. So again, like, at the time, playing it in the 90s, it makes sense to be able to, like, easily move around or, like, to, or, sorry, sorry, it makes sense that you would have to put in time to explore the levels to find out that this is actually the way out of the level. But it's just the fact that it's not hinted at really at all. And again, when I when you're younger of this age group, you look at this boulder and it goes, that's blocking off that path. I can't get by it. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a strange one. But again, I wonder for modern players, like if you're a modern player and you, you're, you're now a fan of these games, how did you find the, um, the game pathing or the game like uh, telling you where to go? Like, showing you this is the way to go, because, again, that, that takes time. That takes time and exploration to figure out, oh, I, I can actually go by that boulder. It's very unusual. Okay, anyway, moving swiftly along, we're going to head out the entrance door to this level, and, of course, we're going to meet up with a famous character that everybody loves. And, uh, yeah, so here we are. Oh, there's a boss. A boss boss bar at the end of the screen right but before i actually deal with uh, we just had caught a glimpse of him before i deal with that gentleman i'm actually going to find yeah all the secrets in peru this is the last secret to find in peru so i'm gonna head up here i don't think i've ever seen this secret as well in the game strangely enough but yeah we've got a large health pack pick up and we have Magnum bullets as well, for magnums that we are yet to pick up. How much? How many magnum bullets do we have now, actually? Eight. Okay. Right, so that's cool. Uh, I've never been in this room. Again, with the lovely light box. Although, again, that one looks like... Uh, that's not as good as the other light boxes we've seen. It looks more like a diffused light. <laughs> again. Right, so the, are, have, they, have they lost their way already by level four of the game? Okay, right. So, as well, I believe there's one more pickup in the level. So, I'm going to head up there. And, of course, as we can see our friend up here, we've got Mr. Larson that we met at the front of the game. We'll come back to you in a second, Larson. Shut it, Larson. And uh, we will then kick Larson's ass with the shotgun. So, he was the guy I thought was at the last part of the last level, but it turns out that he wasn't at all. He's actually at the end of this particular level. But first, there's a couple of pickups, or at least one pickup. And so where the T-Rex was as well is now blocked off because you can get down this location. You can't get back to the T-Rex. Um, I think that's like a cool one though for like, ooh, like a player like that is it really, really is loving this game and would go, oh, can I get back down to where the T-Rex was again? And they would try and then they would be, you know, uh, what's the word? Gifted with a final pickup. Another heavy med, med pack. Right, okay, there's nothing else down here, so let's get back to Larson and kick his ass. Shotguns at the ready. Why not? Or is there actually a... Is there a trophy, actually? Before I continue, is there a trophy related to killing Larson in a particular way? No, so apparently not. Uh, it's just one trophy for killing Larson, so let's do that. I never knew Larson was that easy. You have my total attention now. I'm not quite sure if I've got yours though. Hello? Oh, 
healing hide to a barn door yet? Of course. You and that driveling piece of the ski on. You want to keep it so bad? I'll harness it right up your... Wait. <laughs> talking about the artifact here? Her lips move as well. Right up. Hold on. I I'm sorry. This piece, you say? Where's the rest? Miss Natler put Pierre Dupont on that trail. And where is that? Ha! <laughs> you ain't fast enough for him. So you think all this talking is just holding me up? I don't know where his little jackrabbit frog legs are running him to. You'll have to ask Miss Natla. Brilliant. There we are. Thank you. I will. Roundhouse kick. Lara is so cool. The unfound tomb of Kuala Peck. Okay. 31, 11. Secrets found, 3 out of 3, and 8 out of 8, and 7 kills. So yeah, I've got everything there, plus 1.88 kilometers traveled. Um, brilliant stuff. That is level 4. Oh, and we're treated to a cutscene. Oh, lovely. Let's have a look. Go back and forth. What I always thought was interesting about this cutscene is, like, in this original Tomb Raider game, there is no civilized locations, as in there's no cities, we don't go to any oil rigs or anywhere particularly humanity-led uh, or civilization-led. But, uh, this video all takes place in a skyscraper in a city. Obviously, Lara is heading up there now on an elevator. Cha. What, where we know as, yes, Natla Technologies. You kind of wonder, did Core Design want to, to, to have a level that takes place in a, a skyscraper? This is folly. New temptations torment me. Rumor amongst my fellow brothers is that entombed beneath our monastery is the body of Tiokan, one of the three legendary rulers. Just casually sitting in her office like... And that with him lies his piece of the Atlantean skill, a pendant divided and shared between the three rulers, which curbs tremendous powers. Powers beyond the creator himself. My toes sweat at such possibilities. My toes sweat. Each night I beat myself rid of these fantasies, but it is indeed a... And here is a very, very famous line. <laughs> Pierre, you little bug. Love it. Right, so here we are. We are moving on to, of course, St. Francis Folly. And we will leave that until next time. We are moving on to my, possibly my favorite chapter of the game. Massive fan of St. Francis Folly. But we will leave that until next time. Although I believe there's one more thing I'd like to try here before I end the episode. Because I have not tried it yet. And I think there is a... Whoa! <laughs> well, that's me dead. <laughs> there is a photo mode, but I'm not sure how to get into it. And I'd like to try the photo mode. Is it this? No. How do you get into the photo mode? Controls. Let's see. Do the controls tell me how to get into the photo mode? Secondary. Is it L3? No. How would you get into photo mode? Now start. Hold start. Hold this. No. <laughs> Up. No. There, there are the items. Well, there's the ski on. I have no idea how to get into photo mode. Let me have a quick look online. Okay, so apparently you have to click in both sticks at the same time. So let's get Lara in a cool pose here. There we are. Right. Is that a cool post <laughs> for poor old Lara? <laughs> That's brilliant. That is kind of cool, actually, in a weird way. I presume I can do some other kind of interesting stuff. Like, I can probably change what Lara's pose is. Yeah, here we go. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Lara looking absolutely class with her eyes completely closed. Oh, brilliant. I love that. That's, a, that's so cool. That's like LucasAid Lara, isn't it? Ah! Yeah, Lara's pretty awesome. 
Right, let's get the Lucasade, Lara. There she is. Classic outfit. I can change. Oh, no. I need to save the cool outfits. I'm not going through the outfits that aren't in this game. I can't. Oh, I don't want to look through them. I want to save them. Magnums. Oh, oh, oh my God. She looks so cool. And look at that. <laughs> All right. Absolutely hide it. There we go. There's a new profiler, ladies and gents. <laughs> brilliant stuff and on that note i'm going to leave you there with lara on screen thank you very much for watching and next time i can't wait saint francis folly funnily enough it's one of my favorite levels in the entire game and i love this chapter of the game in general and we'll find out who this pierre the Litterbug is also atlantean beings does this game have something to do with atlantis let's find out together see you next time